Hi, I'm Gareth Green and in this video I'm going to talk about the difference between two time signatures, 2-2 two, two and 4-4. Four, four. So let's think about one or two fundamentals for a moment. Two numbers in every time signature. The top number is telling us how many of something are happening in a bar or in a measure and the bottom number is telling us what those somethings are. Okay, so just so we're clear about that. So if two is the upper number, well, there are two beats in a bar or a measure. If four is the upper number, there are four beats at a bar or in a measure. So that's all fairly straightforward, isn't it? So what does the lower number tell us? Well, the lower number, remember, is telling us what those somethings are. So I hope you can just accept for a moment that if we have four at the bottom, that's telling us that they are crotchet beats, quarter note beats. If we have two at the bottom, that's telling me that they are minim beats or half note beats, okay? So two half note beats in a bar or four quarter note beats in a bar. Two minim beats in a bar, four crotchet beats in a bar. Now, the mathematicians amongst you will already be thinking, well, what's the difference then? Because that's the key thing about this. Because lots of people say, well, there's no difference at all. Because they look at this and they say, okay, if you're telling me that 2, 2 means this, where I've just written 2, 2 and put two minims or two half notes in the, in the bar of the measure, well, mathematically, that's exactly the same as this where I'm putting four crotchets or four quarter notes in the measure or the bar. And it's true, isn't it? Two and two is four, four times one is four. So there's no difference, is there? Actually, there is a subtle difference because in two, two, we're saying that there are two beats in a bar. One beat there, one beat there. In four, four, we're saying that there are four beats in the bar. So mathematically, it doesn't feel different in the slightest, but musically, it does feel a bit different. Now, let's just have a think about this. If I start with a 4-4 four, four version, and there's a huge amount of music written in 4-4 four, four time, and by the way, 4-4 four, four is often abbreviated as C, and C means common time because it is the most common time so if you don't want to write 4-4 four, four, if you're writing a piece of music for orchestra or something instead of going 4-4-4-4-4-4 four, 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 you can just go C C C and it's very quick so C is common time 2-2 two, two, by the way is often abbreviated like this you get the C with a vertical line down it and that's called cut common time okay just so that you're aware that you might see that instead of the numbers. So if you see a C, it means 4-4. Four, four. If you see a C with a vertical line through it, it means 2-2 two, two, and it's cut common time. And literally what you're doing in cut common time is halving the numbers. You're cutting them in two, cutting them down the middle. So 4-4 four, four becomes 2-2. Two, two. Okay, so let's think about 4-4 four, four or common time. If I play a piece of music in 4-4, four, four, I need to feel four beats in a bar. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So as you see, I can really feel those four beats kind of digging in very nicely, can't I? Okay, now you don't have to put equal emphasis on all four beats. In fact, if you did that, it would be a little bit unmusical. So normally the first beat of the bar is the strongest beat of the bar. Often the fourth beat of the bar is the weakest beat of the bar. So that helps to give you a little bit of musical flow into this thing. But you're definitely feeling that there are four beats in a bar. Okay, so what's gonna go on in two, two then? Well, say I start with a bar with these two minims in it, these two half beats notes, and then I carry on from there, but I'm now only feeling two beats in a bar. One, two, 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 one, two. Do you see it 
feels differently, doesn't it? I've got this one, two, three, four in 4-4 four, four time. Often military marches are written in 4-4 four, four time. You can feel the soldiers marching. 2-2, two, two, I've only got the two beats in a bar. Often it feels a bit lighter for only having two beats in a bar. Sometimes if you're going to write at a slightly faster speed, it works better to go into 2-2 two, two than it does into 4-4. Four, four. Because if you're going really fast in 4-4, four, four, it can feel a bit manic, you know. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, it might be better to go 1, 2, 1, 2. Sounds less fraught if it goes into 2-2. Two, two. So it might be a question of speed, but not necessarily. It's more a question of do you want to feel two beats in a bar or do you want to feel four beats in a bar? So what does this mean? If you're a composer, well, you've really got to think about what the character of your music is. And I've certainly written pieces of music in 4-4. Four, four, and then somewhere during the process, I thought, you know what, this is going to work better in 2-2 two, two, or the other way around. Just because of the character of the piece, as it unfolds, you feel this one wants four beats or this one wants two beats in a bar. If you're a performer, I can't tell you how many times over the decades I have listened to performances in the exam room and music festivals and all sorts of other places, pieces that are written in 2-2, but people have played them in 4-4. So even though they're written in 2-2, I'm hearing one, two, three, four solid beats in every single bar, every single measure. It tends to make the music sound a bit heavy and doesn't quite get a more light-hearted character that a composer has often intended by writing the 2-2. And it's interesting when you ask players, performers, about that in those sort of situations, often they haven't really realised that they've seen this at the beginning of the piece of music instead of this. They've not really sort of taken too much notice of it. But that common time, cut common time indication at the beginning, well worth taking note of. And of course, when you're learning a piece, you tend to learn it slowly, so you can get all the notes and the rhythms and so on. So even if it's in 2-2, when you're playing it slowly, it's going to feel like 4-4. But at some point, you've got to think, hang on, I don't want this to feel like 4-4 anymore. Now I can play the piece. I want to get this 2-2 feeling into it. I've also sometimes heard people play pieces of music in 4-4 where they've been a bit agitated or gone so fast that it's actually fallen into 2-2 instead of 4-4. So this is not a mathematical difference because mathematically they're the same. It's a musical difference. So I hope this video goes some way to explain that difference and the importance of the difference so that you can be kind of more aware of that in your own music making. And if you've enjoyed learning about that, well, you might want to go a bit further, in which case uh, have a look at our online courses, video courses that we produce at www.mmcourses.co.uk. If you go on there, the homepage will flag up courses. You can click on there and search through the many courses we've got. So we've got a kind of A to Z theory course there. Uh, which you can uh, get as a one big bundle or you can get it in two smaller bundles or you can buy it section by section and it will take you absolutely progressively through the explanation of this kind of stuff and much more besides and going into much more detail of the implications of all of this. So if that's of interest, have a look at that. Lots of other courses on there as well, which you might find helpful. Also, while you're on the website, click on Maestros on the home page and that will tell you about Music Matters Maestros. It's a way of supporting our channel if you value these kind of videos and we'd be very pleased of your support if you can help to keep things going there for us. That would be of terrific assistance. And if you want to go a bit further with Maestros, there are other perks, discounts of courses, for example. And you can join us for a monthly live stream where we're really going deeply into uh, the music of specific composers, how that music ticks, what a composer was thinking, how they've composed a piece of music, lots of other musical topics covered as well. There's a live chat running, so you can contribute to that if you want to. You can ask any question about music that you want to, and I'll do my best to answer that for composers, arrangers, 
uh, people wanting to submit harmony exercises, performers wanting to send in a recording of themselves play, you can have individual feedback on it, uh, which we share with the group, and you'll find it's a very, very supportive group of lovely, like-minded people, and uh, that's something that the people who've joined it have found really beneficial to them, to share the journey with others, to get the feedback, to see what other people are up to, and to hear what the feedback is on that as well. So, there we are. The courses and the maestros group might be something of interest to you.